to get this deck nut off, there is a small Allen screws on each side here and on the bottom that you access through this little hole. There's a little hole right there um, where the Allen key fits into, right through the hole so that you can get at that, that locks that into that uh, shaft. Once you get those loose, then you can take a spanner wrench here and here and tighten that off. So that's the main difference, and that's the first step that they show is to take the cap that was on here off, which is actually where the weight goes into. The weight, uh, the counterweight goes into there, but with this model, it's a little bit different than the way they've got it set up on the uh, Orion Atlas. Okay, another little thing that's different from the Atlas is uh, I'm working on the uh, right ascension. I'm taking this orange collar off. Uh, which the uh, Atlas doesn't have. It's held in there by three, looks like one, two, three Phillips screws, no big deal, uh, so that we can get this uh, collar off, which is held in by four uh, set screws that are two millimeter, I believe. Okay, uh, this is the right ascension housing, and this is the worm gear. And as you can see, they're using a clear grease. Okay, and it looks like that's some, you know, pretty decent stuff. Not that black goop that uh, everybody uh, had been uh, experiencing in the earlier mounts. But anyway, uh, the C-Gem, or at least this one, comes with some, what looks like some pretty decent uh, lubricant, you know. It's not that heavy uh, black tar stuff. But I'm going to remove it anyway and uh, replace it with the synthetic stuff. But, uh... The point is, is that, like I say, if, if you get a C gem and you know it's doing real good and forming well, um, I think you could forego this uh, breakdown. Uh, um, the reason what motivated me is when I went to balance the telescope, it, it was stiff and it didn't, you know, have that nice swing, and I had to really move the counterweight quite a bit before things started to move. So that's what prompted me to do this to see if I couldn't. Uh, uh, you know, get it to be a little bit more uh, responsive to that. Uh, uh, because these look like they're, you know, made uh, pretty nice. You know, at least they're making them better, it looks like. But then again, like I said, I just recently purchased this three weeks ago, and this is November of 2010. Okay, here's an, another difference. If you're going to be replacing these uh, uh, worm gear bearings with those ceramic bearings, there's two things you're going to want to know. One is on the uh, on the Atlas it's pretty much uh, you remove the uh, there's a little cover and then you take this ring off okay with us with a spanner wrench you can see the two holes there. Um, what I used, I just used that and that works really well for that but um, this is a plastic thing it says Celestron uh, it's glued on there the cap is glued on there with some like double stick tape you gotta pop that off there's two rims there there's this upper rim and then this sits in there so you wanna get between this upper rim and then underneath that plastic there so it'll sit like that and you want to get underneath this plastic, you know. Okay, what I used was a razor blade and got it underneath there and then popped it up a little bit and then followed it with a little screwdriver and got it off. And then you got the, uh, you know, those, uh, those two holes there. But the real surprise is after you get that off, not on the spur side, this is the spur side, but on this side, now you have this uh, ring that's down in there, okay? And I've got it almost all the way out so that you could see it. And it's got these two slots. What I did, as you could see, is I took a old, this is a 12 millimeter wrench, okay? And I ground it down, as you could see. I grounded it down, rounded off the edges there. Uh, grounded it down on a bench grinder and, and then kind of uh, trimmed it up with a hand file. And then that will set down in there like so. They 
and then allow you to back it out. And it needs to be, you know, I was going to originally use some, uh, some steel I had laying around, but it really needs to be a tempered steel because that is so small. And they've got this kind of like glued in there. There's some kind of like Loctite stuff that's down in there, which makes, if you use a mild steel, it's just going to bend because it's so small. And it's these two tongs, as you could see. And uh, having this gap in between uh, uh, clears the shaft that's sticking out. So we'll get this taken out of there. There. And now it's out. But you see that shaft, so that ring is way down in there. So you need this in order to you see that. And then it clears the shaft, so you have room like that. So that's that's the tricky little tool. Uh, you might have to make this unless you get lucky and you can get it off with a screwdriver. But I was afraid of hogging it up and then, you know, those edges, you hog those edges up trying to get it out, and now you never get it out. So, Okay, a um, couple of things is that before you move the spur gear here, I think you're going to want to measure what the spacing is between here and the edge, like that, you know, so that when you set it back in there, you've got the right spacing. Also, good idea to double check it, put it over your uh, housing, and make sure those gears are line it up pretty good and give it a spin to see if it's running true. Um, I had set it in there earlier and you know it was a little bit of wobbly so I readjusted it. There's two screws there. I marked the shaft. Ed does mention that. You know he says to mark the shaft there where the flat side is so that you know how to line this hex screw up or a set screw. Um, the other thing to get the uh, ceramic steel bearings. This is not this is not it. This is the one I took out. It, it, to get it over that shaft like that, um, what I did was I took a socket wrench, put it over here so that it it covers the, uh, you know, so that it covers the housing, uh, the metal part, and then give it a nice gentle tap so it goes straight down. That way you're not tapping on the, uh, you're not tapping on the uh, plastic or uh, a retainer that holds the bearings and the grease in. This already has that ring fitting in there. Um, the other thing I noticed is that when I tighten this up at first, I think the first thing you do is tighten this side up to get it seated because it has this collar and it seeds the bearing at the right, at the right uh, uh, depth. And then you come in on this side and then you start to tighten it down. Uh, but you don't want to over tighten it because what I found is I had over tightened it at first and you know, and, and you see how this spins? It's just it kind of goes and then it just kind of like stops and I think that could be because it's over tightened or it could just be the bearing uh, but with this one you know you can hear it you get a much better a much better action out of that way way big improvement you know and not look at that it really spins and this is the original bearings in here and you get like it goes like one quarter, one eighth of a turn after you let it go, and then it stops in its tracks. Whereas this just keeps going. So that's pretty nice. You know, I wasn't going to upgrade the uh, bearings because I figured, hey, what the heck, they feel pretty smooth. But uh, that there made this turn a whole lot nicer. But it could also be, like I said, because I, originally I had tightened this too much, and then it was acting like this one. It was sluggish, and I backed it off a little bit and now it spins. So maybe, you know, a guy could get in there, pop that, and back it off a little bit and get that good action, so. Okay, there's uh, one other thing I think that needs to be kind of like uh, emphasized is that on this uh, gear bearing here, you need to put a fair amount of uh, lubricant on there. And when you take it off, you'll see that there's a fair amount. And the reason why this is important is because the clutch button uh, runs along here. And it's uh, right here without the handle on it. And the button pushes up against here. If this is dry or not enough lubricant, you'll experience the uh, motor bogging down because it's sliding against this area. Now this is a brass button and this is a brass bearing. And uh, I had uh, put this all together and was uh, experiencing some real severe drag to where the uh, uh, 
telescope couldn't uh, reach its target. Uh, it was that bad. Even though I had lightly put a light film of grease on there, it wasn't like this. It needs about a sixteenth or less. And uh, ju just make sure you get a good amount on there. You don't want to, of course, go crazy, but y as you can see, when, when you take it apart, uh, just take note of how much grease they put on there. Uh, and, and I think that this was a, this, this, this created a problem for me. So now I had to take everything back out and I've got to do both of them, but so that you don't have the same uh, encounter, I figured I'd mention that.